Alright, so we set it here. And I'm going on. Uh, I've been talking about a bill that recently has been getting notoriety in those of us, those people who live in the state of Iowa. Complain, and it's complaining about it. And I'm actually going to have the actual file, well, the actual bill for it right here. And it's absolutely, as you can see, an act related to conduct of elections, including absentee ballot and voter list maintenance activities. I'm just going to go over the stuff that needs to be discussed that is new in this and what people are complaining where people are complaining I mean like you got here is the in this underlined section if the return envelope is received in the state commissioner's office before the polls close on election day or is clearly postmarked by an officially authorized postal service or bears a postal service barcode traceable to a date of entry into the federal mail system not later than the day before the election as provided in section 53.17a Me meaning as long as the absentee ballot was received by the post office the day prior to the election means they'll accept it can't send it the day of the election And try to write all this down, but the news section, conference boards, appointment limitations. I mean, this is this is no one's been talking about this, but it's pretty much all stating uh, for the purposes of conducting the business of a conference board established pursuant to the section 441.2. Persons are not served in a voting unit of a conference board if such service would be. Incompatible with another office held by that person. If a person is a member of more than one conference by those members make up a voting unit on the conference board, that person shall waive the person position on the conference board for all but one of the bodies the person represents. Waiver pursuant to this section does not cause a person to vacate any effective or elective office. I don't really understand that. I mean, you come, when you come across this video, you have an idea, and you want to write it down in the comments. I'd appreciate it. As perform duties as an elected official fails to perform duties described in chapters 39 through 56, except for section 40, 48 alpha point four one, or fails to follow the implement. Guidelines issued pursuant to such a person. See, and that's actually not, no one's talking about this. I mean, yeah, you know, here's one that does need, uh, I think, a lot of people who like, I can't remember who it is right now. Um, Judicial Watch, I believe, or something like that. The ones that are always trying to clean up voter registration would like this part. Um, but in, if the individual fails to perform voter list maintenance in violation of section 48 alpha point four one, so if and there is a section about the voter, but in there that'll be talk about what they do on that instance. See and new sub paragraph they got new sub paragraphs and stuff like that. Interference with a person permitted at a polling place pursuant to section, which means is that, and it's going to uh, the same individual that if they're part of that board, they and they do this, they're removed. Uh, actually, I think this is more on the um, but it kind of. There are people that are not pro that are prohibited in collecting and delivering a completed ballot 
they need to be dropped to a Dropbox. I mean, yes, we have some Dropbox, but where they're located are more closely regulated because they're uh, outside of public buildings, like the administration building in Nevada, Iowa. It has a Dropbox in front of it. And you got making a false or untrue statement reporting that a voted FZ ballot was returned to the commissioner's office by mail or in person or to a ballot drop box by it has been re removed, prohibited to collect and deliver a completed ballot. And I just, I haven't read through most of this, but a fun issue of a technical infraction to a county commissioner, the state commissioner shall also impose a fine not to exceed $10,000 to be disposed, deposited in the general fund. A county commissioner shall pay a fine issue pursuant to this section or file an appeal pursuant to Chapter 17 Alpha within six, 60 days. Yeah. Going on about fines and stuff. And let's see, we got a new section election misconduct investigation. And I know people have issues with that. Because, come on, investigating any issue. I mean, the attorney general or county attorney shall investigate allegations of election misconduct reported to the attorney general. Or county attorney. Election misconduct by an election official shall also be investigated for prosecution under Chapter 721. It means you throw away ballots or fill in ballots that someone left on a spot blank. You do anything besides count that ballot or even not even deliver it when you're trusted to deliver it you can't you'll be held responsible keep track of my phone. and upon the completion of the investigation required by this section the attorney general or county general, the attorney shall submit the results of the investigation to the state commissioner and explain whether the attorney general or county attorney will pursue charges in some, a lot of cases here, they probably will pursue the charge anyways. Preclusion of partisan nomination, that's not really something that's been discussed, but it's just nomination for position. Goes on and on about that. Let's get to, uh, where was that? All right, we'll get to this one. I don't know. They made this. This was added into the registration. The state register shall, in the first quarter of each calendar year, conduct a verification of all voters in the statewide voter registration file, which shall include cross-referencing the records in the state wide voter registration file with similar records maintained by other states. The state register of all voters shall cancel the registration of a voter found to be ineligible for, ineligible pursuant to section 48 alpha 1.30. Now we'll get further down it explains what reason they did it for. The state register shall submit a report to the General Assembly by April 30th of each year regarding the number of voter registrations canceled pursuant to this. So it's not just like on federal election year they're going to review a thing. They're going to do it every year. Regarding the number of... Okay, the state register shall also publish this report on the internet site of the state register. So you can see who's registered to vote. The state register may contract with a third party vendor to develop a or provide a program to allow the state register to verify the status of records in the statewide reg voter registration file and state. 
in identify eligible voters and ineligible voters on an ongoing basis. Basically, making sure if someone moves out, they can be removed from the moves to another state. They will be removed from the Iowa registration. Well, you would no longer be able to vote in Iowa. Amended by adding the following subsection. Section 21, uh, Section 47.7, Code 2021. The state register of voters shall use information from the electronic registration information center to update information in the statewide voter registration system. I include, but not limited to, the following reports in state duplicates, in state updates, trust state matches, deceased, eligible but unregistered, national change of address. And I have a feeling some people would be upset about this part of it. Shouldn't I be able to vote twice or any more than once in an election? Now, here's where a lot of people start complaining about them. They've changed our dates from from ele- for the registration, but there's a, a part in here that you will see why their ang- anger is wrong. Okay, registration closes at. 5 p.m. It's now 15 days prior, well, 15 days before each election. Uh, 11. An eligible electorate may register during the time registration is closed in the electoral precinct, but the registration shall not become effective until registration opens again in the electoral precinct, except on otherwise, except as otherwise provided in Section 48 Alpha 7 Alpha. All right, and here we go. And it's going off for that as well. The state register shall compare a list of persons who are registered to vote with the Department of Transportation's driver license and non-operator's identification card files and shall, on an initial basis, issue a voter identification card to each active registered voter whose name does not appear in the Department of Transportation files. The voter identification card shall include the name of the registered voter, a signature line above which the registered voter shall sign the, ver- the voter identification card, the registered voter's identification number assigned to the voter pursuant to section 47.7, subsection 2, an additional four-digit personal identification number assigned by the state commissioner, and the time during which polling places will be open at election day. So... Here's the thing, if you're going to say requesting identification for voting is discrimination, this right here shows you that if you're here legally, you can get a voter voter identification card. It's not that hard to understand. You have a way to vote if you do not have any form of identification. And they even will give you the times when voting happens. Let's continue. I haven't gotten to that other part yet. Alright, so this is section section 40, amendment to that, that section. No shall, no shall contain a statement in substantial form. From information received from the United States Postal Service gave that you are no longer a resident of and therefore not eligible to vote in the name of the county, Vienna, Iowa. If this information is not correct and you still live in blah blah blah, please complete and mail the attached postage paid card at least 15 days before any election at which you wish to vote. If the information is correct and you have moved, please contact the local official in your new area for assistance in registering there. If you do not mail in the card, you may be required to show identification before being allowed to vote in blah 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 in whatever county you live in. If you do not return the card and you do not vote in the election in that county on or before the date of the second general election following the date of those, your name will be removed from the list of voters in that county. So 
you're they give you opportunity if you move uh, if you do not move and you like miss a vote voting or something and they feel, feel like you don't live there they'll send you a card saying hey are you still living at this address living at this place and okay continuing on each commissioner shall conduct a systematic program that makes a reasonable effort to remove from the official list of registered voters the name of registered voters who have changed residence from their registration address If I didn't, if I don't find it, I'm, I'll return to what I found earlier. I'm where I should have been in here. Commissioner shall participate in the United States Postal Service National Change of Address Program as provided in provided in Section 48 of the same section. The State Voter Registration Commission shall adopt rules establishing specific requirements for participation and use of National Change of Address Program. Okay, it's probably coming up. I know I read it somewhere, but I'll find it. It's probably in this somewhere down in this section, hopefully. The commission participating in the national change of address program. Bang, please. Yeah, calendar year report. The the most recent general election. So, if you have not voted in the most recent general election. And it has not registered again, or has not reported a change of existing registration. Registered voters receiving such notice will be marked inactive. If you receive a notice, it will be marked inactive. The form and language of the notice and return cards shall be specified by the State Voter Registration Commission by rule. Registered voters shall not be sent a notice and return card under this subsection more frequently than. In a four year period. And we got section. Alright, let's see. Notice shall be contained in statement. Information received from the United States Postal Service in the case that this is what they're actually talking about. In the case that you are no longer a resident of blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. Iowa. If this information is not correct, you still live and you still live there. Please complete and mail the attached postage paid card at least 15 days before any election at which you wish to vote. If the information is correct and you have moved, please contact the local office in your area for that. And there they would be removed from the lit voter list. The Iowa voter list. So, so the notice shall be games, the information is not correct. If the information is not correct, yada yada yada. That's just a repeat. Yeah, yeah, it's just more instructions. You do not mail in the card, you have the card to show identification. Tell them, yes, it'll actually sell. The registration exists. This code is that. Yeah. No. Inactive record records are also records of registered voters. It's just going. It's uh, continuing on about the inactive record. Inactive. And cancel records and all that. See in the voter list maintenance. Uh, I read there is an interface that they're stop trying to stop uh, having mail like mail ballots or absentee ballots sent out unless the individuals request for them. And that was, I think, voter registration maintenance. Uh, 
oversight by the state commissioner. And some changes. And the changes management is usually pulling in place for the yeah, so changing where if you they will send out the information if you pull in place and change. Place it on the internet. Let's see. Okay. Now, they have some, but I'm going to say it anyway. They are required, they are requiring any time a absentee ballot is requested that they have 24 hours once the absentee voting uh, requests are able to be sent, received, and sent, the absentee ballot sent out within 24 hours of receiving them. It's not that eh, that probably is it further down, but it's not that hard. Yeah, and, and this shouldn't have had to be in. Well, this is probably a good thing, but it shouldn't have had to. The person standing for election on the ballot for a voter shall not occupy the voting booth with the voter, including to assist the voter. There's only certain individuals allowed to assist, and this pretty much well this section states who is allowed to, and what they can and cannot do. These are who is authorized. These are is by law authorized to perform or is charged with a performance of official duties of the at the election. Any number of persons not exceeding three at a time from each political party having candidates to be voted for at such election to act as challenging committees who are appointed and accredited by the executive or central committee of such political party or organization. Any number of persons not exceeding three at a time from each party to obtain accredited at the same manner. Pretty much old. A lot of times they just repeat each other. And to be honest, I haven't read this whole thing. I, uh, you got your police officers. Wait, I'm just kind of skimmed through it. And get any person experiencing an interest in ballot issued to be voted upon at an election except the general or primary election. Any person authorized by the commissioner and consult. consult yeah. Stutter consult consultation with the Secretary of State. Yeah, you got different precinct precinct election official. Yeah. In, okay, employees entitled to time to vote. Any person entitled to vote at the election in a state who does not to have two consecutive hours in the period between the time of the opening and the time of the closing of the polls during which the person is not required to be present at work for an employer is entitled to such time off from work time to vote as will in addition to the person's non-working time total two consecutive hours during the time the polls are open publication by the employee for such absence shall be made individually and in writing prior to the date of the election, and the employer shall designate the period of time to be taken. The employee he is not liable to any penalty, nor shall any deduction be made from the person's regular salary or wages on account of such absence. See, that's people are complaining. Most people are complaining about, oh, it's disenfranchising. This bill is disenfranchising people. This just gave people an opportunity. To get off out of work to go vote. So I don't know what the pro why that why people are focusing on the bad or what they believe is bad. Okay. Enforcement. Explain enforcement on this. 
Let's see, uh, register voter may make written application to the commission for an uh, absentee ballot. Okay. All right. Any registered voter under the circumstances specified in section 53.1. Wait, I'll probably have to look that up. But it's if you fall in that category, may on any day except election day and not more than 70 days prior to the date of the election, apply in person for an absentee ballot at the commissioner's office or at any location designated by the commissioner. However, for those elections in which the commissioner directs the polls to be open at noon pursuant to section 409.73, voter may apply in person for an absentee ballot at the commissioner's office from 8 a.m. until 11 a.m. on election day. Hmm. We're short on that time frame because there's some, but there's certain time frames where things should be done. A registered voter may make a written application to the commissioner for an absentee ballot. A written application for an absentee ballot must be received by the commissioner no later than 5 p.m. on the same day as a voter registration deadline provided in section 48 alpha point nine for the election for which the ballot is requested. Except when absentee ballot is requested and voted at the commissioner's office pursuant to section 53.10. A written application for the absentee ballot delivered to the commissioner. Yeah, 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 70 days prior. Right, and this is, the line's always a new stuff. Kind of stuff. The commission may send an absentee ballot application to a registered voter at the request of the registered voter. The commissioner shall not send an absentee ballot application to a person who has not submitted such a request. Which, let's put it this way. I never requested absentee ballot, but we, it seemed like we got absentee ballots either well, either an absentee ballot or a uh, paperwork to request one, which we did not ask for. And that one is a waste of taxpayer money, and two, unethical. And it's just a waste of time. In the event of a public health disaster declared by the governor pursuant to Section 293.6, the General Assembly made by resolution direct the State Commission to send an absentee ballot application to each registered voter prior to the primary or general election held in an even number year. If the General Assembly is not in session, the Legislative Council may so direct the State Commissioner by a majority vote. I heard no such thing on that. That was pretty much just recently added. was recently added. But I'll tell you this much. I, they weren't, they shouldn't have been sending that to them. Because we were all voting in person here in Iowa. Well, we were all we were allowed to vote in person. And here we go. No absentee ballot application shall be provided to a registered voter with any pre-filled, except that the absentee ballot application may have the fields for the type and date of the election pre-filled. Which yes, if it's for that, that. So saying someone sends an application and it's you an application form and they have well who you usually vote for, Democrat or Republican, they have the opposite selected for you. It means they're just trying to cheat for you. Trying to cheat. If okay, here we go. If the application for an absentee ballot is received between 5 p.m. on the 15th day before an election and 5 p.m. on the 17th day before the election, the commissioner shall notify the registered voter within 24 hours that the absentee ballot request cannot be processed and notify the registered voter of ways the registered voter may participate in the election and notification sent pursuant to the subsequent shall be transmitted in the same manner as Notification transmitted pursuant to subsection 4, paragraph B. See, 
they will say, hey, we didn't receive your your absentee request in time. We're gonna we you have these options, and I guess because and that's where these people are getting so grumpy as well. And you know, on the first day of that absentee ballots are mailed in each primary and general election, and each specific election is presented to. Uh, I can probably skip some of this. Yeah. The bill number. Provide all necessary. All right. Okay. Here, here, this is one where a lot of people have been pointing out. Upon receipt of an application for an Epstein ballot, and immediately after the absentee ballots are printed, but not more than 20 days before the election, the commissioner shall mail an absentee ballot to the applicant within 24 hours. Meaning. They get that app, that request, boom, that app, that file goes out, out within 24 hours. Yeah, the absentee ballot shall be sent to the registered voter by one of the following methods. And then just they kind of missed that, but a it's in section 53.8, section two, paragraph A. Seems like mail delivered probably. Here's how you do it. Commissioner shall enclose the absentee ballot, a statement from the applicant that the sealed return envelope may be mailed to the commissioner, person and get registered by the registered voter, or a person not prohibited to collect and deliver a completed ballot pursuant to section 53.33. May be returned to a drop box established by the commissioner pursuant to that section, subsection 1 by the registered voter or a person not prohibited to collect and deliver a completed ba ballot. There I believe if I ran across that list. Which is there's a lot of, there is quite a few things. Political parties, I believe members from political parties cannot deliver the ballot. And people have been stoned ballots. Man a person not collected. Statement shall also inform the voter that the, the voter may request that the person not prohibited to collect and deliver to complete a receipt when retrieving the ballot from the voter. So you can request that the, the individual received it, that took your ballot, you can say have a note saying they, they took it. And absentee ballots cannot go out to anyone. That has not requested one. Let's see. The date of primary election or in general election, the commissioner shall provide facilities for absentee voting in person at the commissioner's office. These areas shall also be provided for other elections as soon as ballots are ready. But in no case shall absentee ballots be available under this section more than 20 days before the election. No more than 20 days before the day of an election. Satellite absentee voting stations shall be established upon receipt of petitions signed by not less than 100 eligible electors requesting that a satellite absentee voting station be established at a location to be scribed on the petition. However, if a special election is scheduled in the county, on a date that falls between the date of the regular city election and the date of the city runoff election, the commissioner is not required to establish a satellite absentee voting station for the city runoff election. The satellite absentee voting station established by petition must be open at least one day for a minimum of six hours and may remain open until 5 p.m. on the day before the election. And Bob Sullivan. If mailed by the sell down below. As long as they're not prohibited, they can deliver. They can be delivered. I does me.
Yeah, okay, the commissioner shall establish more than one ballot drop box, which shall be located at the office of the commissioner or on property owned and maintained by the county that directly sub surrounds the building where the office is located. Like what I said here, where I live, we, we actually have the Story County Administrative Building and the Story County Sheriff's Office in our town. So they have a mail-in box outside the administrative building. I mean, it's still there. I mean, it's only meant for when there's for that. Oh look, next time I just I just know. A video surveillance system shall be used to monitor all activity at the ballot drop box at all times while the ballot drop box is in place. The system shall create a recording which shall be reviewed by the state commissioner, county attorney, and law enforcement in the event that misconduct occurs. So, if you mess with the box, they will find you. And with it here, a ballot drop box will be available no sooner than the time that the FCC ballots are allowed to be mailed, presented to the ballot drop box shall be removed or restricted from Accepting deliveries immediately upon the closure of polls on election day. And you gotta maintain a log on when things are retrieved from the ballot box. In, or, in order for the ballot for ballot be counted, the return envelope must be received in the commissioner's office before the polls close on election day. And the commissioner can receive uh, the absentee ballot within 72 hours of returning for the voter. And add terminology. More uh, timelines. And and here is it uh, addressing the dif like if there's a deficiency in in the affidavit. Like lagging it. I'm gonna show you this one. Seeing as we have to ballot, da da da. See for all other elections, the commission shall review if it's marked on the return envelope. And also, if it's missed in some, you got 24 hours. The voter of the deficiency, and then the voter that the from the voter that the voter may vote a replacement ballot. As provided in subsection D, get the ballot as provided, or, or complete the affidavit in person at the office of the commissioner, not not later than the time polls close on election day. And they was so far, I have not seen anything personally that would mean people are getting cheated out of. Collections on. They did bring up one thing I probably won't find on here, but it goes on. It's just more, more. Ballot prohibited. Ballot unbroken. Name and other information preserved. Preserved. I mean, we don't have much flaws in our here. Um. They want, they, someone brought up the fact of it makes it harder for the military to vote. The military has special exemptions when it comes to voting. I voted while I was in Gitmo, and I had plenty of time to vote. Because there's no issue. I mean, they give us time to vote, and... There is ways that you tally up the vote, because we cannot really have we do have issues with paperwork being transported, but there they have it to where the military can vote, and 
th this, these, they're, well, these are exceptions. And it says there are exceptions to some of these statements. Until people understand that you got exceptions, you might as well stop just reading what the news tells you. Actually go into it and research. Actually read the actual documentation. I mean, I need, I'm about ready to go and read the uh, thing that actually has passed about the Second Amendment. That what here in Iowa that yes we're gonna have to vote on, but it is designed to protect the Second Amendment here in Iowa. And there was another thing going on about having a, con a constitutional carry, which means no perm you don't wouldn't need a permit to carry, which. I enjoy. Um, it's gonna be it for this for today. I know this is gonna be a little late, but I will see you next time.